Hey, what's up everybody? True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get hit with the truth. So today we are doing the 2023 top 10s as we are looking at the 126 pound featherweight division and we are starting from 10 to 1. This is on my number 10 featherweight in the world right now. The former, I think, three-time world title challenger, Joette Gonzalez of Mexico. Now, before we get into that, if you could smash the like button, leave a comment, or subscribe to the channel, I really do appreciate any and all support that I can get as I continue to build my channel here. So, um, this one, uh, Joette Gonzalez, uh, he entered the year not ranked. He was just outside of the top 10, though, when he entered the year. He was coming in off of a year where he got, um, he took on Isaac Dogbe and went to a 10 round war that ended in a very close split decision for Dogbe and a fight that, that a lot of people feel that Gonzalez could have won too. It was that close. It was dead even. Um, a lot of people had it a draw. So he, he really went to war with Dogbe in a really good fight over 10. Um, I still contest that that was bullshit that a final eliminator is only a 10 round fight. Those should be 12 rounders. Um, but, but, but he entered the year, you know, um, really, um, with not a lot of, uh, you know, just kind of that option guy kind of deal, um, gatekeeper mode kind of deal. And he would, uh, defeat, he would get a decision win in April over a guy named Vivas. And then on September 15th, he would get his third opportunity at a world title when he would challenge Luis Alberto Lopez. And, um, it was a fight that a lot of people thought Lopez was going to win myself included. And, but it was also, people thought it was gonna be a banger, myself included, and it ended up being that way. It was a good action-packed fight. He went at Lopez, um, really challenged him hard. He never let Lopez off the hook to take over the fight, but Lopez did outwork him overall and uh, got out of there with a 12 round unanimous decision, but it was somewhat close. Um, he just came up short. So he enters now, he's 26 and four with 15 knockouts, he's 30 years old. Um, his highest rank is number eight by the by the WBC. Um, pretty much uh, same role that he was last year, but he I think his stock is a little bit higher than it was last year because with Joette Gonzalez, you're never gonna get a down moment. You're never gonna get a, a dominant performance. He his two previous losses to Shakur Stevenson and um, uh, for titles to Shakur Stevenson and also to. Uh, to um, Imanu Navarrete where, I mean, those are great fighters right there. Stevenson just outboxed him and dominated him over 12. And Navarrete is a truly uh, special fighter as well who beat him by a clean unanimous decision when they fought, but he showed a lot of heart in that fight. But the losses to Dogbe and Lopez, close fights. And to be honest, I don't know if there's a, uh, um, you know, a guy with the style of Stevenson and everything that might be able to dominate him anymore at 126. So he's still a player. He's still a guy on the verge of being a world champion at any moment. So opportunities can come at any moment too because he's also with the, the best promoter in at, at featherweight, top rank. Right now, top rank has Luis Alberto Lopez, Rafael Espinosa, and are on the verge if Odebeck uh, Komatov becomes the WBA champion, they're gonna have three of the four world champions at 126. So Gonzalez, in my opinion, really can fight anybody at any moment uh, for, you know, in an eliminator, in a, in, for a world title, because for some of the guys that are young at be, being a world champion, like Espinosa, like um, Kolmatov, he's a good opponent to test yourself against, to see how good you really are. And then uh, for the challengers, he's a good opponent to, to really push yourself into that mix to show everybody, hey, I, I'm, I'm definitely a player in this division. So, um, Gonzalez has a lot going for him, a lot of opportunities. I really believe um, he really could fight anybody. Espinosa, I think, might be out of reach in the first half of the year just because um, I think a mandatory fight or a rematch or Robesy Ramirez could come down the line. But I also think he has an opportunity to fight Robesy Ramirez in somewhat of a title eliminator. Um, then of uh, the champions, like I said, I think Kolmatov, if he becomes the new uh, WBA champion, could get a crack. Uh, Gonzalez might be able to get a crack at him. Uh, I don't think a rematch with Lopez is warranted, and I don't think Lopez would be interested right now um, for uh, that one. Um, and 
that's pretty much uh also another one if the two promoters could get together i'd love to see him and mauricio lara slug it out um in an all mexican war right there but gonzalez i think will get opportunities as he's done pretty much every calendar year and he might still be here in the top 10 at the end of the year because he's mr reliable so we'll see what happens but that's it that's what i got that's my 2023 top tens on my number 10 featherweight in the world right now at 126 pounds, former three-time world title challenger, Joette Gonzalez in Mexico. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, smash the like button, leave a comment, or subscribe to the channel. I appreciate any and all support. This is True Boxing. You've been hit with the truth.